Welcome to MCN, one of the best bikes I've ridden in the 2023 launch season. Now it's the only bike I've ridden in the 2023 new bike launch season, but it does set a very high bar. This is the Moto Guzzi V100 Mandelo S. Now I'm going to tell you why I think it's so good as the video progresses, but right now here are the headline facts. This is why I think it's so good. The Moto Guzzi Mandelo isn't isn't bland it's really characterful without being shouty or kind of brash um, it manages to be a perfect mix of sportiness comfort technology character it's fantastic you really feel that this isn't a bike that's been built down to a price it hasn't been kind of watered down on the way from it being a design sketch to rolling out on the showroom floor and you don't get the sense that it's just another model to fill uh, a range in, in a manufacturer's kind of lineup. This is a, a really beautifully thought out, well-made bike that's really enjoyable to ride. So it is a sports tourer and it's quite difficult to kind of place where it fits when you look at pictures. I've got a picture up here on my little laptop. It is a handsome devil. Obviously, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, but when you see it in the flesh, it is actually quite a low bike. It's got a low seat. So although before I rode the bike, I thought it would be like a conventional sports tourer, like a Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT or a Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX or a BMW 1250RS. It is like all those bikes. In a way, it's kind of laid out but it's kind of got a, a tall rounder riding position. Um, so the first thing I thought when I saw it is that it's like a low rider Yamaha Tracer 9 or a low rider Honda NT 1100. So if you're a short rider, this would be right up your strata. Um, so let's talk about a few of the headline facts on the bike. So one of the, the big things about it is that it's the first motorcycle to have adaptive aerodynamics, which sounds quite a flash. Um, normally aerodynamics on bikes now are all about um, keeping the front wheel down under acceleration and stability of braking and fast corners. But that's not what uh, the Guzzi's Guzzi's wings are all about. It's about directing airflow around the rider. So when you're going along, the wings open automatically to a 30 degree angle and they direct um, wind around you and your passenger, only around your waist. And Gutsy say that um, it's a 22% less air pressure, uh, also directs the, the weather around you. The, the flaps don't come out in the top two riding modes in sport and street. They only come out in touring and rain. In rain, they're always out. Uh, and in touring, they come out automatically at a given speed, about 40 mile an hour, something like that. Um, but you can go into the menu and change. I've got it written down, actually. Um, when do they come out? They come out at 43 miles an hour. Or you can set them to come out between 19 and 56 miles an hour. Um, and then they come back in again at 20 mile an hour, so they're not flapping around. I mean, to be honest, they're a bit of a gimmick because they only really direct air around your waist area. And I've never ridden a motorbike where I think, oh God, I've got too much air pressure on my belly. Um, it works with the electric screen, which is standard, um, to sort of put you in a cocoon of air and keep you separated from the weather. Um, and the screen does work well. It's a lot quieter than something like a Tracer, a conventional sports tour like this. There's no buffeting. So it's quite pleasant in that respect. And working with those wings, yeah, maybe they do something, but we rode this bike for an entire day around Lake Como near where uh, Guts's factory is in uh, Mendelo de Lario. And I couldn't really tell any difference, to be honest. If you live with this bike day in, day out, you might notice some difference. But those flaps are so small, they're never going to do a lot. Um... The other really impressive thing when you jump on the bike is how comfortable it is. So it's a sports tourer and tourers, newsflash, need to be comfortable. So I'm six foot. I'm not too big for the bike. The The pegs are kind of 
they're positioned in a quite of a sporty way, but they don't really cramp your knees. Um, the seat's really plush. It's got a nice little lip on the back of it to hold you in under acceleration. The passenger seat's just as plush and it's got grab handles. The bars are just in a perfect position. They're, they're just perfectly set towards you. Um, so there's no big stretch to the bars. There's no pressure on your wrists. It's just, just a sublime riding position. And better still, um, there's accessory seats available. So if you want to go even lower than the 815 seat height, you can. I mean, as it is, you can get feet flat on the floor really, really easy. So that gives you confidence around town when you're stopping. Um, but if you're really long in the leg, you can get a higher seat as well. So the comfort on this is absolutely impeccable. And it's got rubber top pegs. I could see myself riding this a long, long way. And also, or we'll come on to the accessories later, but there's a lot of nice uh, touring goodies you can get for this bike. Um, so the engine. Motor Guzzi's have always had transverse mounted engines. So that means the engine, the crankshaft, runs in line with the frame instead of across the frame like a conventional bike. And they always have shaft drives. So in the past, I mean, Guzzi's have always been about grunt, and not massive top end power. This is kind of in the same vein, but this engine is Gutz's lightest, shortest, most compact, most powerful engine they've ever produced. It's got 50% less inertia inside the engine than the old Gutsy engine. Um, it's got ride by wire for the first time, which facilitates all its riding modes. And it's got its cylinder head swivel round by 90 degrees. So instead of the pipes coming out the front and the injection coming out the back of the cylinder heads, now the pipes come out the side and all the injection and all the gubbins and the alternators all inside the V. And what that does is basically, A, makes the engine look really clean and uncluttered, and B, it gives you more knee room. Some people on this launch were saying that there's a lot of engine heat. I never really noticed that to be honest, but you know, that, that could be the case. You, you, your legs are closer to the pipes now. If you live in a really hot country and riding around town, you might notice the heat. In the UK, you'd probably be very grateful of it. Um, but what Gutsy have done is given the bike more performance, it's got 113 bhp, which might not sound a lot when it's pushing along 233 kilos, but it's plenty powerful enough and a sports tourer doesn't need to face melt in uh, power, does it? I've read in some of the comments when we went to the launch on our Facebook page that it's not a patch on a sports adventure bike like a KTM 1290 Super Duke GT or a BMW S1000XR or a Multistrider V4, but it's not supposed to be. And to be honest, if you rode any of those bikes, you'd very rarely use all the power they've got. This has got just the right amount of power and I never rode this thinking I wish it had more. Um, it's got lots of grunt, so you never need to be dancing on the gear lever. And the power is nice and flexible. The throttle response is nice. You can change how much power or how much bite you get from the engine through the riding modes. Really, really nice. And the best thing about it is that the, the gutsy character is still there. So when you blip the throttle, the engine still rocks a little bit but not as much as before because they've put a, a counter shaft in there just to cancel out that inertia effect. By the way, this engine was developed by the same team that produced the RS660 engine, because it's all Piaggio, isn't it? And the V85, some scooters, but also the 2015 RSV4 V4 1100, which if anyone's ridden one of those bikes, Order to Ono will testify that it's one of the best engines ever built it's incredible so all that know-how has gone into this this has got finger followers as well which is something you only normally find in performance bikes um so yeah it rocks slightly but not as much as before so you still got that character um but it's a lot more it's a lot it's a lot easier to kind of deal with it doesn't distract you it's just nice and smooth then you've got the the shaft drive reaction which on previous gutsies was quite pronounced and again on this, that's kind of almost been ironed out because because the engine's shorter, the swing arm, the single-sided swing arm, which contains the shaft drive, has been is longer. The the swing arm pivot is lower, so there's less squat when you're on and off the throttle. If you really gun it, you can start to feel the bike 
kind of pitch and twist as you can do on a big BMW Boxer. But again, you, you barely notice it and it just serves to give the, the guzzy some gutsy. You see, the English way is you'd say guzzy, but the Italian way you say gutsy. But there again, you say pizza and not pizza, don't you? Anyway, the gutsy, um, it just gives it a load of character. And, and I just love it for that. You know, well, we'll come on to how it compares with the competition in a bit. So let's go on and talk about how it rides and handles. So we've seen that it's comfortable. So that's perfect for touring. We've seen that the engine has got a little bit of spark in it, a little bit of bite, but character as well. So that's good for touring and that's good for when you're feeling sporty. Um, and it handles and rides really well too. So during our ride, it was damp all the time. So I probably didn't even lean it past two degrees, let alone 62 degrees like Marquez does. Um, so we weren't really able to, to test its handling. But what we were, were able to feel was its plushness over bumps, especially in the, the more touring orientated rider modes in rain mode, really, really plush. Obviously, you only get the semi-active Olins with the S model. I'll come on to that again later on. Um, the standard model's got Kaeba adjustable suspension, which has got adjustable preload and rebound damping. So the Olin's ride quality is beautiful. The bike doesn't feel too long or lazy. I mean, Gutsy's always have handled, but in their own kind of quirky, lovable way. But this feels more like a, a conventional road bike. Um, it doesn't feel odd or weird at all. The only thing that feels a little bit kind of old Gutsy would be the gearbox. So although the gearbox has been redesigned, it's slicker, it's more accurate than it's ever been, you kind of still need to take your time with it, especially in the lower gears. It's got a quick shifter on it, which is really good. But if you're expecting this bike to waz through the gears, bah, 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 it doesn't, doesn't like it and it's not supposed to do it. So you've got to be kind of a little bit more patient with it and a bit of a firmer foot on the gear lever. But again, that's not a criticism. That's just the way it is. Um, so yeah, you've got this great, great riding character. You've got fantastic ride quality. It's got Pirelli Angel GT2 sports touring tires on it. So they grip really well. Steering's nice and neutral. You know, you just go where you look. You don't have to worry about it fighting it or it being too fast steering or anything like that. Um, and of course you've got um, electronics to back you up. So the gutsy has got electronics for the first time, like proper electronics. It's got the same basic electronics as an RSV4 Superbike. So you've got the latest INU, um, is it the 11MP Morelli Jobby? Um, you've got lean sensitive traction control, lean sensitive ABS, quick shifter, cruise control. That's all operated by via the brain, ride by wire. You know, we never needed to bump into any of those electronics. They may as well not have been connected up, but when you're riding in the wet like we were in the damp and you're not sure of the conditions, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's nice knowing they're there. So I would imagine just you get the sense from the bike and the people that design this also make Aprilia's, one of the best handling bikes you can buy. So I'd imagine on a nice, dry, hot, sunny road, this will handle beautifully as well. So the electronics we just touched on then. Let's see, it's got a lot here, so I've written it down. So you've got riding modes, four riding modes, and within those modes, you've got different levels of traction control, suspension control. Um, you can adjust and customize all that within the within the uh, the dash. It's got a color dash. That uh, color dash is basically the same as most Aprilias. On the Aprilias, the graphics are a bit kind of Fisher Price, a little bit PlayStation-y, whereas on the the Guzzi, it's much more. Uh, much more refined. It's really classy, really nice to read. Um, you've got the wings, you've got the electric screen. There's LEDs all round, including cornering lights. You've got cruise control, a USB charger. So yeah, so the standard model costs 13 and a half thousand pounds. And the S model is 15,750 pounds. And those prices are as, uh, 
of autumn 2022. With the standard model, you get a pretty well spec fully loaded bike. The only thing that S gives you is that semi-active Olins, uh, up and down quick shifter, heated grips, which are on our test bike, but even on full, they're not very good. They're more kind of triumph, not great spec, rather than burn blisters in your hands like a BMW um, and a tire pressure indicator. And then accessories you can get for it include lots of luggage options, including um, a rack and a top box uh, and panniers. So you could load this bike up two up and comfortably do big miles on it. Um, but with the panniers, you, there's no ugly frame. You basically just clip the panniers into the bike and off you go. So, you know, after riding this bike, I'm so, I'm so impressed. <laughs> I really am. Um, I can't wait to ride it again, to be honest. I mean, compared to its rivals, so let's go through them. So compared to the Suzuki and the Kawasaki I mentioned, it's more expensive, but this bike is beautifully made. Um, it's got better chassis parts on it, so it's gonna handle a lot better than the Japanese bikes. Um, a lot more character, more comfortable bar position. And although, you know, it, away from the lights, the Japanese are probably kick this one into next Thursday. Doesn't matter, does it? This has got plenty of power and it's got loads of character. Compared to the BMW 1250 RS, I would say, I mean, that bike is brilliant, by the way, that BMW. The BMW is slightly more touring orientated, I would say. Um, the Gutsi is a little bit more minimal and it will be a little bit more agile in corners. Um, and just generally a little bit more sporty. Compared to a Honda NT 1100, well, a lot more exciting and lower and easier to manage. Uh, and compared to a Tracer, um, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with Tracers. I do like them and I love the engine, but the screen is just offensively loud for me. And I'd have one of these over a Tracer any day of the week, purely for that reason this is more expensive than a tracer you can get a tracer gt with all the panniers and all the equipment on it for less than the gutsy but i would have the gutsy just because it's more characterful it's got a more interesting engine it's not quite as, as manic if you're actually sports touring you know it's very easy for road testers to go on launches like this and just concentrate on performance because you don't actually get a lot of time on the bike but a sports tour is supposed to be relaxed and comfortable when you're on long trips. And I can see the Gucci being a really nice companion on a, on a, on a riding holiday. It'd be fantastic. So there you go. That's the Moto Gucci V11 Mandelo S. I'm really impressed. It's really nice to see Moto Gucci making their mark in the world again. I'm sure we'll see this new engine with all the development that's gone into it in other bikes in the future. Can't wait to ride them and I can't wait to ride this one again very soon.